Jesus, we give you all the glory. There is no one like you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, you are worthy of our praise. Daddy, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise. You are marvelous. Daddy, you are you are marvelous. Daddy, you are marvelous. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. Blessed be your name, O God. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Now, the song that dropped in my heart when I was dying this, for this service this morning, uh, it's a common song and uh, a known song. I want to sing it in one minute to just worship the Lord. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. Glory be to God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. Your name is God. You do the If you know God has done something great in your life at all, I want to just lift up your voice and say, Father, I thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy over my life. Thank you, Jesus. Baba, there is no one like you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be exalted. You do mighty things in my life, in my family. If you are so afraid that God has done mighty things, can we just praise him this morning? Father, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Jehovah, we worship you. King of glory, we lift up your name. Blessed be your name, O God. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are watching. We are going to take our word capsule, the book of Psalm 16, verse 11. Psalm 16, verse 11. That's what the passage you are taking as our word capsule this morning. We take the word and take it in. Psalm 16, verse 11. Bible says, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasure forevermore. And when you understand this scripture, when God is the one showing you the path of life, that means he's always beside you. And if God is beside you, then you know there will be joy around you. There will be joy there. Is, you can never, no, no plan of the enemy will come to pass over your life. So we are going to pray. We are going to swallow that word this morning. You will declare to the Lord, the Father, please guide me and show me the path of going life. Lord, guide me and show me the path of going life. In the name of Jesus, I don't want to miss my way. Father, Lord, guide me and show me the path of life. The path of God. I hope you are praying. I hope you are praying. In the name of Jesus, Father, guide me and show me the path of taking life. In the name of Jesus, Lord, your warfare, you show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand, there are plenty of forevermore. Father, show me the path of taking life. Guide me, O God, in the name of Jesus. I will not fall into error. I will not fall into mistakes. In the name of Jesus, guide me and show me the way to go in life. In the name of Jesus, let your light shine upon my ways, upon my academics, upon my career, upon my marital life, upon my relationship with you. In the name of Jesus, 
Negele mosoto koto brani higere yere boska. Rekete yege gele bosu. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we are praying. Father, Lord, we declare your word this morning. Because your word says, Thou will show the path of life. You know everything. There is nothing that is hidden in your eyes. Lord, we pray today that your light will shine upon our lives. In the name of Jesus, Father, come and guide us. Daddy, come and lead us. In the name of Jesus. And we know that when you are guiding us, when you are with us, there will be joy. So we pray, Father, let there be joy in our lives. In the name of Jesus, as many under the sound of my voice, oh God, that have lost joy in one way or the other. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, let it joy be in us. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. If you're happy to be with your can you give up to Jesus? Amen. Amen. Let's have our seat in the presence of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God all the glory this morning. I'm happy to be in the presence of the Lord, to be with the people of God again, to bring the word of God to us. And I want to appreciate every one of us. Thank you for coming. I will continue to say it if it is only me and my family, my four children and my wife, I will just say, God, God, don't do me like this. <laughs> but I thank God, God did not do me like this. <laughs> God, I'm not alone. So I want to appreciate every one of us. Uh, we give God all the glory. And I want to announce this morning, we have, have a good news for us. And the good news is we have somebody God has added for us. Hallelujah. If you have it of in the house, can we clap the hands of people? We have one of our brothers, uh, Brother Hazy. Brother Hazy is part of us, and I know he's, he's here online this morning. He's not just visiting. Brother is, Brother Hazy is fully part of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. We welcome Brother Hazy to, to the church. Brother Hazy is one of the committed and consistent brothers in Water Globe Parish. And I just thank God for his life. Since I stepped into that church in 2016, September, I've seen him and he has been consistent. We pray for him that that consistency, consistency will continue in strong to our parish in the name of Jesus. The Amen. Lord himself, we anoint him afresh in the name of Jesus. But I say we love you. You are welcome. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Please don't forget the scripture we are using for our word capsule. I explained to us, it is from the Lord. Anytime we come like this to bring the word, we take that word inside to pray about it. Note those scriptures in your Bible. Please underline them. You can pray about it when you work with your family throughout the week. Pray about it and you will see God doing signs and wonders in your life in Jesus' name. This morning, shall we move on to look at the word of God? This morning, we are going to continue our series. We started a series on the heart of faith. I didn't know it's going to be like this, but I thank God for our Father Lord is taking us. And personally, I want to tell you, every series that we have been looking at, it has been even a blessing to me. It has been a blessing to me. We give God all the glory for that. Uh, and this morning, we are going to Act of Faith Part 5. Act of Faith Part 5. So today, that's the topic, and the subtopic this morning is ever-increasing faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ever-increasing faith, that's our top topic, but we are still looking at Out of Faith Part 5, and the subtopic for today is ever-increasing faith. Let's read the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. That has been um, a scripture we have been using, for whatsoever is born of God. Whosoever, whosoever is born of God, overcometh the world. Note this scripture very well. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So, for you to overcome the world, you need faith. 
That's why I begin to see the reason why God is taking us through this thing. I just, I just trusted God for God to give us the word and the church. And God started giving us this. So whatever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world. Even our faith. Even our faith. So our faith is very important. It's very important. And we begin to, we begin to describe what is our faith. Begin to describe, we, we said faith is positive response to what God has already done for us. The faith is positive response to the word of God, to what God has done, to what God has said to for us as his children. And, um, and also we started looking at, I want us also to read a passage this morning. Let's also read Galatians chapter 3. I think that's a second rider, be a rider to that first John 5 for Galatians chapter 3, verse 7 and verse 29. Galatians chapter 3. Know ye therefore that they which are faith, the same are the children of Abraham. They which are faith are children of Abraham. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. And here's according to the promise. So we are children of Abraham and we are part of the seed. And because we are the seed of Abraham, the blessing belongs to us. The promise belongs to us. Take note of that. That is very important. So we started looking at one act of praise that we started looking at on the first Sunday of May. We said, is praising God because we are sure that God has done it. If you are just thanking God, so that God will do it. No, he has said to the devil. So we are praising God because we have seen him. God will never be running all our earth because of what he has done it. Yeah, I was listening to that in Chio this morning. Uh, his, his message, and he said something about, do you know the greatness of God? That God sits in heaven. And Bible says the earth is his food too. That means his leg is on the heart. If his leg is on the heart, then can we use our mental picture to look at how great that God is? <laughs> if God is so great, then we are what? Let your mind be at rest because he's the greatest. He will do it for you. So whatever you are trusting God, I want to assure you, my God will do it for you. In the name of Jesus. So we said we need to praise God. And also, secondly, we started looking at, we are looking at Hebrews chapter 11. We started from Hebrews chapter 10, from verse 32 down. We, were, we, now, we are now in Hebrews chapter 11. We now started looking at the, the story, because in Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible started giving us the, the examples of heroes of faith. That these people, they had a good report. And we said, also, we also need good report. Can we just look at those lives? Then the way we started looking at, we saw Abel. And one of the things that we saw about Abel, that's a wonderful teaching and a revelation that I will never forget in my life. When I saw it, I said, wow. We saw Abel as the revelation of the love of the Father. And we said, we also need that in our life. Revelation, if you don't know that God loves you, you cannot go far. We need the understanding of the love of the Father. That was what we said. And also last week, we now looked at Enoch and um, Noah last week. We said Noah and Enoch. God, they walk with God. That means God was saying that if you have the understanding of, of, of the love of the Father to you, then you need to walk in that love. You need to do walk in that relationship. If you know Father loves you, if you love your wife, then you need to communicate. If you love your father, you need to ask what you want. So that means our show that we have the understanding of the love of the Father is when we relate with our Father. That was what we look at last week. And we pray that God should draw us closer to him. It's also part of the song we have this morning that God draws us, turn, turn our lives around and make, make our lives fire so we can burn for you. So shall it be for us in the name of Jesus. So when you go to Hebrews chapter 11, we are going to continue. The next thing, the next life we saw looking at the universe of faith there is Abraham. It's Abraham. And Abraham this morning knocked very well. They are he's in two fold. There are two stories shared by I said maybe it's brother Paul that wrote Hebrews. Uh, I don't know, but uh, the, the, because of the writing, that writings uh, I realized because that writing was somehow 
uh, the same with their pistol. So personally, I concluded it's by Paul that wrote it. So there are two things that Paul said about Abraham here. He, he said something about the promised land, and also he said something about sacrifice of Isaac. He said something about the promised land and the sacrifice of Isaac. And also about the, also in that family, he also talk about Sarah. And in Sarah, he talk about conception of Isaac for Sarah. So, but let's move on. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 to verse 11. Thank you, Technica. God bless you. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, listen very well, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obey, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. Verse 9, by faith, he saw John in a land of promise, as in a strange country. Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac, and Jacob be here with him of the same promise. But stead, Bible says, for he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past eight, because he judged in faithful who. I promise. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Let's read that. We will build from there. Genesis chapter, chapter 12, verse 1 to verse 3. Two. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. The last verse. And I will bless them that bless thee. I hope somebody say amen. Because you have the seed of Abraham, then you can say amen. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee, and in thee shall all families of the heart be blessed. Amen. Now let's start building from there to begin to see what act of faith God is going to give to us from the life of Abraham this morning. I want us to look at verse 8. Bible says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out of the place which he should afterward receive for inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not, to him, not knowing where he went. Now, the first thing we can see from that verse is. Abraham, there was a word of the Lord for Abraham. He received a word from God. And it was that word that increased, that, 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 that changed his life. It was that word that put him in another pedestal in life. But then the word of God can never, we, we can never play with the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, Faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if you want your faith to increase, then you need the word of God. We are in the days that people are just sleeping with Bible. People are no more reading the scripture. And the word of God is very key. If you don't know what the word is saying, then how can we be an effective Christian? We need the word of God in our lives. You know, I'm always taught when I begin to listen to fathers of faith and many, many, maybe when during the, during the course of their teaching, and I begin to say, ah, uh, I've read Bible, Bible many times from Genesis to I said, God, how many times have I read in it is? The word of God came so, brother, how are we handling the word of God in our life? That's number one. Don't let me, uh, let me just stop there with that. And number two, when the word came, he acted on the word without seeing physical proof. He just received the word. He didn't say, God, show me. He said, God, I'm not going anywhere until I see a sign. Until when you show me. So that is the faith that God is saying. 
God a good report. I would say you obey, you even not knowing whither he was going. And I don't forget that as humans, we always believe that sin is what? Is believing. As humans, we believe sin is believing. But God is saying to me, is what? Believing before sin. Can we read the book of John 20, verse 29? John 20, 29. That was the story when uh, Jesus Christ appeared to the disciples after the resurrection. He said something to, uh, to Thomas there. He said, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. You see me and you are happy. You now believe. He said, blessed are they. That was the shock. Blessed are they that I have not seen. Yes, they believe. <laughs> are you going to be part of those people that though they did not see a sign, but they believe? Why do we believe that it's heaven and earth today? Have you seen one? We, did not, we have not seen one. I have not seen hell. I'm still praying. I will not see the Jesus name. It is heaven that I want to see. But we did, we did not, we have not seen it, but we believe truly there is because it is in the Bible. So God is looking for people that will believe the word is war without seeing it. And I begin to look at, I begin to look at Abraham here. I said, Abraham believed what? He believed that there is a land which God has prepared for, for him and his descendants. And he also believed in the speaker of the world. He believed the world and he, he acted on the world. Why? Because he knew that God cannot lie. Titus chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. He said, that God, that God cannot lie. Titus chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. Paul is servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. Verse 2, in hope of eternal life with God that cannot lie. Promise before the word began. God can never, can never lie. It's not a man that he should lie. Neither is a man that should repent. So if God says something, he just believe it. That was what Abraham believed. He said, this God, this God is great. So, he believed, he received the word, he acted on it. Why? Because he believed in the speaker of the word. Can I take it say something? Can I take it say, faith is acting on the word of the Lord. So we are saying, what is faith? Faith is when you act on the word. You receive the word. That's why if you see God is about to do something, he will first of all send his word. He will first of all send his word. So be, that's why before in your life, before you take any step, before you go to do anything, one of the things we used to tell people, uh, especially uh, when we want to counsel people for marriage or anything, though dream is, you can say you have a dream, you have a dream, you have this, but one thing we always say is important is what? The world. The dream can be, can be because of what you, what you did in the day, but the word of God can never do it. So look for the world. And if you have the world, can you do something with this world? The word of God is true. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 20, 21. I love that scripture. That's this. Uh Brother Peter. Second Peter 1, 16 to 21. Second Peter 1, 16 to 20. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Follow that scripture very well. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were high witnesses of his majesty. Listen very well, please. He said, for he received from God. What's what he's talking about, Jesus? He received from God the Father, honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the eternal glory, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice, which came from heaven. Listen, he said what? He said, we are. 
<laughs> he said, we had the war. The arm was open like this, and we had the war from heaven. That somebody was speaking to a speaker. That was what Brother Peter was. He said, we had it ourselves. When we were with him in the holy mount. Continue, sir. He said, we have also. Now look at I love this. He said, we have. He said, do that thing happen. He said, but now. We have also a mutual word of prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, no, we had Jesus that time. He said, but we also have a mutual. Underline that in your Bible. Don't ever forget it. This Bible is mutual word of prophecy. We are also to him to where that he take it as unto a light that shines in the darkness. Until the day dawn and the day star arise. In your heart, verse 20. Know it is false that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Then, for the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but only men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Do you know what Brother Peter was trying to say? Let me just tell you summary of that statement. He said, When we had the war, God spoke in a from heaven. Concerning Jesus, he said that same word that we had with our ears is the same thing. What well, with this Bible? <laughs> That's what Peter is saying. He said, Don't say that word is more than this one. Don't ever say that word that we have is more than this Bible. No, they are the same thing. They will do the same work. That one will do the same work. So if God has told you at the beginning of this year. That this year is your year of progress. I beg you, run with that one. Run with that one because you will experience progress. And I declare in your life, this year 2021, you will experience progress. No more stagnancy in your life. In the name of Jesus. So what is faith? What is this act of faith that we are talking about? Is what? When you hear the word, act on the word. Don't wait for signs. It is when you act on the word of God that it becomes a reality to you. You never experience the power in the world if you don't act on the word. For example, they say pray your tithe. I will open windows of heaven. If you are not acting on the word, you will experience it. it act on the word. Give and it shall be given back unto you. Act on that word. You will say, don't say God bless me first before I'm going to give. God is saying you are going up on other side. That is not my word. When God says, show love to people, the result of showing love, you will see the heart on the wall. So what the failure we have been, believers have been experiencing is the failure of what? Failure of acting, not acting on the word of God. That is the issue that we have been experiencing. But I pray from today, your life is changing. You no more disobey the word of God. In the name of Jesus. And I love this scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. This is what I want to show you. You must never forget in your life. Uh, if, if you can help me to read in Amplify, sir, technical, if it's possible. I love the Amplify version. Second Corinthians 1 20. Second Corinthians 1 20. Let me read it from here. In uh Second Corinthians 1 20. King James says. For the promises of God in him are J, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now, look at this Amplified Version. New Living. Okay, this is New Living. Okay. I will have before Amplified, but the same thing. He said, for all God's promises have been fulfilled in him. That is why we say what? Well, Amen. Oh God. When we give glory to God, to Christ, there are two things there. He said, what God has done is what? Is yes. Then he now needs amen. Only when a amen meet with yes, that is when we have manifestation. Note it. It is only when amen meet with what? Yes, that we have what manifestation. Yes, is the integrity of God that what He has said is going to do it. Amen is our agreement. Is our all acting on the word? Yes, I'm going to act on the word. 
I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I'm going to show love. I'm going to give God. I will go to school. I will. Uh, you will do things. You begin to take steps. I will start that business. It is only when you agree on thy death that will be manifestations. I pray today as you begin to agree with the yes of God, of His promises, that manifestations in your life. In the name of Jesus. And when you also look at the scripture, you begin to see that I realize that Jesus also didn't show himself to the unbelievers when he resurrected. Have you thought about that before? When Jesus Christ resurrected, he didn't show himself to the world, to the, to the unbelievers. He only showed himself to who? The believers, people have it, that have knowledge, that believe. People if their knowledge is not full. You only, that's only the people who show himself to. So it's not until when you begin to say, I want to see. Just like I say, I want to go and see Pilot. Uh, Pontius Pilot. I want to show him that I've resurrected. No. He said, I don't need that. That was why Luke chapter 16. I will not read it, but note it down in your Bible because of my time. Luke 16, 26 to 31. The story of Father Abraham and the rich man. I know that's too tough. I will not read it, but let me just... The Bible says, that rich man came to Father Abraham. He said, oh, I have some bread at home. Can you please let me go back or let some people to go and meet them? Do you know what Father Abraham told him? He said, no, they are prophets. Just leave them with the prophet. He said, if they did not hear the prophet, then they will not hear. Just leave them with the prophet. You don't need to go and show sign. You they don't need sign. The prophets are well with them. Moses and prophets are there. Let them hear them. So God is saying, what you need is what? What you just hear. It's not compulsory, you see. If you lay alone the wall, you have the wall, come to your own with it. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So it is not about seeing, but believing what God has said. Believing what God has said to you. So the word of God should be our priority in life. Be wrong with the word. Sleep the word. Meditate this word. Because this world is powerful. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. That is one thing we have seen. The second thing I saw about Abraham. Second thing I've seen, I've seen I saw about I saw about Abraham in verse 9 to verse 10. I want us to look at it. Verse 9. He said in verse 9, he said, By faith he sojourned in the land of promise. As in a strange country. Dwelling in Tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the years with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which have foundations, whose builder and maker is God. I read this scripture when I was, I read it for many times. I, I, I stood on it. I said, God, what, what are you saying? And the light just shine. I've never seen that before. The light just shine to me. And God said, look at it very well. Abraham, God, he, he had the word of the promise. Go to the land. When you read this, it's very well. Read it very well. He went. Lord, Lord followed him. I mean, when Lord followed him, he go to the land. He built an altar. He did everything. He went to Egypt. He had some experience. He came back there. God said, this is the land I want to give you. In Genesis chapter 13, from verse 14, God said, yeah, after God, after God separated from me, God said, now look to the right, look to the left, walk there. This is the land. This is the land I said. So the promise that God told him, he, he got to that land. Are you getting what I'm saying? He got to the land. But when Abraham got to the land, hey, my God, Abraham, look at it very well. He said, but he is the land of promise as in a strange country. He got there, but he's saying, God, no, this is not final. He said, God, I'm too administrative, like you promised me. But no, this is not the final thing. You are not, this is not, the, I'm not saying you are not taking me to this place, but this place is this place. You are not a God that will stop here. You are a God that will continue. That means Abraham saw something about God. This is it. When I look at that, what is we say? This is what? Ever increasing faith. The faith of God that we are talking about is not a faith that when you have this, you have the promises and you know what? You sleep there. Say so that is final. 
No! <laughs> the faith of God is not a faith that you have a promise now and you sleep down there. He said, This land, though you promise me, is still a strange land. That's a place I'm going. That is something I'm seeing. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Just like I say yesterday. To, tomorrow, it's not only yesterday. It will continue to today and it will continue to tomorrow. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. He said, We are moving forward. And, and we'll be all him in a glass. From where? From glory to glory. So we are changed from glory. The faith of God is not a stagnant faith. So what we are saying is God say, I'm going to do something for you. And God has done that thing. Don't ever think that is final. There is this something God is expecting. This is the faith of Abraham that we are learning now. Please note it very well. This is ever increasing faith. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 10 to verse 14. But, I, but Paul says something there. Philippians 10, verse, Philippians 3, verse 10 to 14. So that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. Verse 11. If by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though, look at it, I had already attained. If they were already perfect, what I follow after. <laughs> That's my point. He said, Do I have experience many things? That's what I've not attained anything. I'm still following. If that I may apprehend that for which also I'm apprehended of Christ, I'm still going. Verse 13. When I can't know myself to have apprehended, I need to have achieved something. God is saying, Don't settle down for mediocrity. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth, I'm reaching forth every time. Because that is the faith of God. That is the spirit behind it. Verse 14. I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward. I'm just pressing. So that is what, but I've never seen this scripture in this life before. Abraham got to the promise, but he's still counting that promise as a strange country. He's still saying, there's still a place I'm going. Abraham is saying to us, the promise is more than just a land. Hallelujah. The promise is more than just a land. He was looking for a city. The promise is more than just a land. He was looking for a city. That was why. He dwell in tents so that he can get the, the city that has foundation. Look at it. He said, I will dwell in 20 years. The dominion of tents at that time is a makeshift. They can remove it and move on. That means it is not final. It is not a place of settlement. It is not a permanent place. Where I'm going is where there has foundation. Foundation is a place that's well permanent. You can't remove foundation. When you build it, it is there. I'm not staying here alone. I'm not staying. This is also for us as a church, as a family, as an individual. The faith that God is talking about is not a faith that you just stay and say, yes, I've got into Canada. That is fine now. Hey, I've been found now, Canada. Oh, Canada. Yeah, I'm not here. That is all. Abraham is saying, where I am now is temporary. Where I'm going is permanent. The faith of God is ever increasing faith. And I remember that's our dad, that's why our daddy grew. I remember the first auditorium at uh, almost in the camp by the uh, by the by the roads. I was there. Later we moved to the second one. After some years, we moved to the third one. Uh, yes, the first one, second one, third one. After third one, we move to, uh, to the fourth one. After the fourth one, we are now in uh, Shimawa now, kilometer by kilometer, three kilometer by three kilometer. And you see the vision of them are still saying, uh, we are, he even said, he said, we have not yet started. And many of us say, we take kilometer by kilometer. We have not yet started. Then where are we going? 
is what is that it was told to us that what the faith of God is not a stagnant faith. The faith will keep on moving. See winners. See winners. They started university, almost three universities now. Winners are recently heard the news. They are the first university in Nigeria. Number one. There is a dome they are, they are building now. They have started it. They did the launching recently. The, the faith of God is always moving. We have whistles. We cannot sit down. Ah, then we are okay. No, that is not the faith of God. God is saying there is more room at the top. I can't settle less for mediocrity. That means the vision that God is talking about is the vision that we keep on moving. Is the vision that we keep on moving. You are trusting God that God should give you your wife. Or you, you want to settle down. For God they say it's not, it's not only the wife. That's not only the wife. Children will come. Even before children will come. That's your wife. It's not only just I know. Something, you done something must happen to our life. It's not just the wife. It's more than not the wife. There's a vision behind that. So the faith that God is talking about, what has God done for you? Don't say to them, say, ah, I am not okay. I am not okay. Nothing again. The faith of God is ever increasing faith. That means, number one, God is saying, he will not just heal you, but he wants to make you. That's the whole meaning of that. Luke chapter 17, let me just give you those scriptures. Luke 17, verse 13 to 19. Just like uh, uh, you do 10 lepers, and Bible says he has them. One came back and he greeted, and he said, Where are the other nine? And they said, I don't know. And just guy said, Because you are you are you are back, so give me thanks. You are your your faith has made you oh, that means you are moved from one level to another. God is telling you that if, if I'm going to heal you, I'm not just healing you to stay there. I'm healing you for you to become whole. After you become whole, that also through your life, people will see me. I prophesy upon everybody here this morning, at the sound of my voice. God will use you. You'll be a source of blessing. In the name of Jesus. Number two, when in Genesis chapter 47, verse 11 to 12, you can read the story of uh, Joseph there. What happened to Joseph? God did not just deliver Joseph from the prison. God made Joseph a blessing. I was saying, Joseph placed his father and his brother and gave them possession in the land of Egypt. In the best of the land, in the land of Hermesis, and as Pharaoh had commanded, then Joseph became a blessing. He was not just released. And I was saying, Joseph nourished his father and his brother and all his father's household with bread according to their families. He did not just forgive them. But he did what? He became a blessing to them. So the faith of God is ever increasing. Faith. Number three, no matter your level spiritually, there are still land to conquer for the Lord. John chapter Joshua 13, verse 1. Bible says, Joshua. But John was talking to Joshua. He said, You are now, he said, but I still land to possess. There are still many land to possess. Don't be old now. I will give you strength. Don't waste this opportunity. But there are still lands to, to be possessed. Strong tower, there are lands to possess, to possess for us. And the Lord will help us to possess them in the name of Jesus. The Tower of chapter 28, verse 12. Number four. The Tower of 28, verse, verse 12. God is saying, I'm going to, he said, the Lord shall open unto you his good treasure. How somebody saying, Amen. The Lord will the, the heaven to give you rain unto your land in this season. And to bless all the work of their hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. That the God is saying, I want to turn you from being a what? A borrower at all. Lending. You will lend to nations. God will not just cancel your debt, you also do your life. You will also do what? You will lend to nations. So the faith of God is ever increasing faith. That is what the Bible is showing yourself. This place, this land, Thank you for this land. But there's something, there's a city I'm looking at. <laughs> hey, brother, what are you looking at? What are you, what is in your eyes? What are you looking at? 
Then when you look at the second part of this, of that uh, chapter, verse uh, 9 and verse 10 of Hebrews that we're looking at, though in the land of promise, what the Bible was saying is, though I am the land of promise, that is, this land is still a strange land. He was looking for his city. So he dwelt in tent. He dwelt in tent. Why did he dwell in tent? So that he would not be too comfortable here. Hey, Lakabo Soto Brandy, he get a boss. He dwell in tent. Why we know? Though it was part of what? Their culture there. But according to this scripture, he dwell in tent. So that he can easily carry in tent and move on. So he will not be disturbed. I am still moving. Abraham was saying, I am still moving because. This is not the home. John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3. Jesus Christ, Jesus a promise there. John 14, 2 and 3. He says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, she might be also. So what is God saying? God is, Abraham is saying, I have a home somewhere. That's what verse 10 was talking about. This is not my home. This is not my home, brother. This is not our home. There's still a, there is a, we have our home, no matter how God has blessed you on this earth. But I want to tell you, it can never be compared to the house that Jesus has prepared for us. Let God give us that picture. And I begin to look at, I study the life of Abraham, look at Abraham's life at that place, where he was born in a strange country. Do you know what happened to him there? But he read Genesis very well. Number one, Abraham was honored as a priest there. That's part the fact he was honored, he still counted that place a strange land. Number two, he was recognized as a servant of God. Remember, he, he prayed for Ab uh, Abimelech. I said, Abimelech, there was a cause in his family. Not only when Abraham prayed for him, then the cause was removed. He was recognized as the servant of God. Yes, he's saying, I'm not settled down here. I'm not settled down here. They knew that he was a brave man. When something happened to uh, Lot, no, he, immediately he, he, he commanded the servant that was trained in his house. He said, let's go. And they went and they came back. So the people respected him for what he was saying. No, so this is not the respect I'm looking for. That's the place I'm going. But then what are you saying? What are you saying? Are you, do you have the gift of God in your life? But God is saying there's a place. That's a place that is greater. So, true meaning of the promise, the real true meaning of the promise is to look for a better country. Is to look for a better country. Let's read that scripture, Hebrews 12, 22. So we can be bringing the service to the hand. Hebrews 12, 22. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 12, 22. For ye are come unto Mosai, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Let's also read 13, 14. Hebrews 13, 14. Hebrews 13, 14. Hebrews 13, 14. 13, 14, not 4. Thank you. 13, 14. Bible says, let me read from here. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. There's a city that we seek. No matter the level of our achievement on earth, ever still remain the goal. But I want to beg you, don't settle down. <laughs> Somebody used to say, because you know, sometimes when you have not traveled before, you think where you are going is heaven. It's not evil, there's still evil somewhere. Thank God there's peace here, but it can never be compared to the peace that we are going to have in heaven. But then, so that is the faith that God is talking about, about Abraham. He's an ever in the city. There is one hymn I want us to sing. Just of my heart when I was, if I don't know if the technical help, we have the hymn. Please help us project the hymn. It's a common hymn. I'm going to sing it, then I'm going to pray for her. We're going to end up with this one. Abraham got to the promised land, but he said, God, this is not the final. There's still a place. 
Hey, la poste. This is a lesson for every one of us. You have read. You have got one certificate, but God has said, don't settle down there. You can do much more. So, you can, do we have that song? I send it to all. Do you have it? I'm pressing on the upward way. I love that song. I'm pressing on the upward way. New height I'm gaining. Me every day. I'm greater. I'm all about Lord, plant my feet on high. Yeah. Lord, lead me on. Lord, lead me on. Can we just see that one? Let me stand by faith on earth. And the Second stanza says, My heart has no desire to stay. Yeah, I'm fearless. Oh, I want to be above the world. Please sing that song. Those <laughs> Disappointment or divine appointment for me. Can we pray in the name of Jesus? No more disappointment for me. In the name of Jesus. No more disappointment, oh God. No more disappointment, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Turn every disappointment or divine appointment for me and my family. In the name of Jesus. Let the table so to cut on your gaga. Yes, 
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we are praying. Is there anyone of us that wants to dedicate our life this morning? Maybe you have been moving in the side of the Lord, but you are disappointed. Some things happen and uh, you, you withdraw. I want to tell the Lord, uh, Father, please have mercy. Give me a new beginning. Lord, give me a new. I want to just cry to the Lord in one minute. If you want to use this time to rededicate your life, so that God should help you to be more committed to Him, and that is a lamb to see people first. I want to the Lord, Father, please have mercy. I dedicate my life this morning. If you are doing it, please put your right hand upon your chest and pray for the mercy of the Lord that God should help you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for children that are dedicating their life this morning. Father, Lord, we pray you give them a new beginning. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for the power of your word. We give you all the glory. You are the mighty God. You are the king of glory. You are the ancient of days. Father, I say that thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray this morning. Lord, because you have opened our eyes to see that the faith you have given unto us is a faith that is ever increasing. So, Father, we pray wherever we are already settling down. Lord, when you are saying there are lands to stay in process. Father, we pray, oh God, you open our eyes. Sir. You will strengthen us to so move ahead in the name of Jesus. You say not to fulfill, to fulfill purpose in the name of Jesus. And we pray, God, Father, the heaven you have prepared for us, we pray for all of us which are not made here. In the name of Jesus, I pray for strong to our power, to God, strong to our power, which are not set to for many In the name of Jesus, you move us forward. You move us forward. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But I pray for your children this morning. Lord, as your servant, as the servant in this house, as the angel of this house, I declare for some your children that these your children, they are blessed. I say you are blessed as we go into the new month of June. I declare for you, you will only hear goodness in the name of Jesus. In the morning, you are blessed. In the afternoon, you are blessed. In the night, you are blessed. No evil shall be for you. Every disappointment, the enemy has already planned for you. I stand at the servant of the most high God. I change it to divine appointment for you. In the name of Jesus. You will not miss your targets in the name of Jesus. You will go in peace and come back in peace in the name of Jesus. Next Sunday is our Thanksgiving service. Lord, it shall be full of testimonies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we are praying. If you know you have been blessed at all, can we just clap our hands for Jesus this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please let's have our seat for a minute.